Hello everyone and welcome back to the 1921 World Chess Championship match between uh, Emmanuel Lasker and Jose Ruel Capablanca. This is game number 10. So far Capablanca won only one game, uh, all the other games uh, ended in a draw. So it's up to Lasker uh, to get back into the match. Here Lasker has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Let's uh, just dive straight into it with d5 by Capablanca and of course uh, we are going into the Queen's Gambit decline with knight c3, knight to f6. Uh, and bishop to g5 with bishop to e7 uh, again lasker now first develops the dark square bishop only then uh, finishes the pawn chain uh, with castles by capablanca and knight to f3 uh, knight b to d7 continuing development lasker goes for queen c2 the rubinstein variation preparing bishop to d3 to put pressure uh, on the h7 square uh, with c5 by capablanca and now rook to d1 so obviously lasker will, will not be castling queenside uh, with Queen to a5, now pinning the knight, and the bishop to d3 as planned. So Lasker, of course, does not uh, enjoy this tension here. He pushes h6, uh, makes sure the h7 pawn is uh, never a target anymore. Bishop to h4, of course, uh, Lasker not interested in giving up the bishop pair. And now c captures on d4. With e captures, and now d captures on c4. Bishop captures on c4, and now knight to b6. Uh, or even over in the knight to a better square, from there the knight can come to d5, but for the moment uh, Lasker has to deal with the bishop on c4. So bishop to b3, uh, bishop to d7, and here uh, Lasker catches a moment of breath, and he decides to castle before this bishop, uh, you know, maybe uh, prevents him from castling. With king to g1, and now rook a to c8. Uh, bishop to b5, still an idea, as the rook now occupies the same file as the queen. Uh, with knight to e5 by Lasker, just improving the position of the knight, and bishop to b5. Now, uh, the knight is pinned, so you cannot capture. The rook is under attack, so rook to f to e1, and now knight to uh, d5. A very interesting move by Capablanca, uh, which Lasker does not, uh, not well, I, I'm not going to say punish, but Lasker could have uh, played a better move here. Here Lasker played bishop captures on d5, which allowed Capablanca to really just trade down, uh, but he had a better move. So feel free to pause the video here and try to figure out this improvement in the position both Lasker and Capablanca missed. It's not a, a simple idea, so you know, only if you want to. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you have just found a move both Lasker and Capablanca missed. Uh, and for those of you who want to enjoy the just want to enjoy the show, Bishop captures on f6. It's a bit of an improvement because here uh, you cannot capture with the knight. You have to capture with the bishop and then you get bishop captures on d5. But then it's different because then uh, e captures on d5 comes uh, and the d e pawn will become uh, the d pawn will become a weak pawn. The problem is if knight captures on f6, uh, then the idea is knight to g6. And here just everything can go wrong for black well first of all first of all you're going to lose the rook on f8 uh, there's no good way to save the rook if you play something like rook f8 then you get a rook captures on e6 and this is just disgusting uh, if you capture the knight then uh, you open up this diagonal from the bishop to the king then something like rook a6 check and pick up the queen uh, if you capture the rook then it's even worse it's mate in four bishop captures with check uh, king to h7 now comes the knight to f8 the double check from the knight and the queen King to h8, and now everyone's favorite smothered mate, queen to h7 check, captures and knight g6 mate. So w one of the things that can happen after knight to g6, but also if you just capture the knight, bishop captures with check, uh, just uh, picks up the rook on c8 and the bishop on e7 is still undefended. Uh, so here, for example, after king to h7, you can capture. If black recaptures, you get rook captures on e7, and black is just falling apart. You are uh, just just winning here. Uh, so a slight improvement in the position, definitely bishop captures on f6. Uh, but okay, Lasker went for bishop captures on d5. Uh, we have knight captures on d5, and here we have a nice series of trades. Captures, captures on e7, and queen to b3 now, with a double attack on the bishop. So here, Capablanca goes knight, uh, bishop to c6. He says he doesn't like bishop to a6 because of knight d7 to c5 could be somewhat unpleasant. Uh, so instead, he goes uh, knight bishop to c6. Uh, Lasker, of course, very happy to get rid of this uh, monster bishop with knight captures, b captures, and now rook to e5 with an, atta with, uh, an attack uh, against Capablanca's queen. Queen to b6, Capablanca offers a trade, also hopes uh, that Lasker will capture so he can improve the position, uh, uh, the structure of his pawns, uh, but Lasker, of course, declines. Queen to c2, still keeping, uh, you know, 
uh, all, all the chances alive. He can get some maybe very nice maneuvering in with knight to e4, maybe uh, to d6, maybe even to f6 if the queen can get over to the over to the queen uh, king side. Uh, rook f to d8 now with a double attack against the d4 pawn. And here you see where Capablanca is going with the position. The uh, material is equal. Even uh, both players have three pawn islands. The problem is Lasker's isolated d pawn is much more of a weakness than Capablanca's isolated uh, a7 pawn. It's much harder for Lasker to attack the a7 pawn than it is for Capablanca to attack the d4 pawn. And this is where uh, what Capablanca will use to uh, try and push for more than a draw here. Uh, here Lasker goes knight to e2. He wants to create a very nice defensive setup uh, as the d4 pawn will become a target. Capablanca doesn't like this. He says knight to a4 with an attack on the queen followed by rook to c5, uh, sort of creating a counterattack against the c6 pawn. Uh, could have been better for Lasker, but uh, you know, it's a, it's a ma matter of choice. So knight to e2. Uh, and now rook to d5. Capablanca offers a rook trade. We have rook captures, c captures, now opening up an attack against the queen here, also fixing his pawn structure. We have queen to d2, and now comes knight to f5. So here you can see that the d4 pawn is a huge liability now, and Lasker will have to waste a lot of time defending it. So first, b3. If you don't want the b2 pawn to remain a target for the rest of the game, and the queen will have to defend it, you have to play b3. Uh, we have h5 by Capablanca. He doesn't want to allow g4. The knight uh, on f5 is really great. Uh, the only way to get rid of it is h3, g4. Uh, you don't have the e pawn to get rid of it this way, but even if you did, uh, still the d5 pawn defends it. So this is, a, well, this is basically a monster knight here, and it will give Lasker a very hard time. We have h3 preparing g4, but Capablanca prevents it with h4. No more pawn moves uh, on the king side, at least uh, while the queens are uh, on the board. You don't want to play g4 here and allow h captures g3 on Passan while the queens are still on the board. So queen to d3, Lasker just waiting to see what Capablanca will do, and now rook to c6. Uh, and okay, we have king to f1, and now comes g6. Capablanca makes room for his king to enter the game with queen to b1. Still just waiting to see what happens. Queen to b4 and now king to g1. This is Lasker's sealed move. Uh, this is move 31. As you know, uh, the time control is 15 moves per hour. This is move 30. Now uh, uh, king g1 is move 31. Uh, Lasker uh, uh, sealed this move and after the game continues, Capablanca says it's not the, the greatest of moves. Uh, even though it is the strongest move recommended by the engine, but it doesn't uh, do anything for white. But th that's exactly what white needs to do in this position. For example, if you seal the move that was forcing or something, of course, Capablanca would have analyzed it at home and then, uh, you know, found any, any sort of possible refutation to, to, to such a move. So King G1 is, is, the, is, is the best idea here. We have A5 by Capablanca going for A4. He wants to create weaknesses on the queen side that he can attack. Uh, queen to B2, just waiting to see what happens, and A4. Uh, queen to D2, Lasker now offers a queen trade so he can at least start something like G4. Uh, Capablanca says, okay, no problem. Queen captures, rook captures, and now a captures on b3. We have a captures on b3, and now rook to b6. So just um, forcing rook to d3. Uh, rook to b2, uh, yes, you always want to put a rook behind the pass pawn, but here the, after rook to b2, the problem is rook to b4. And you cannot keep an eye on both your b3 pawn and, <laughs> and your d4 pawn. So here rook d3 is forced, uh, and now this leaves Capablanca the option of going rook to a6 and now infiltrating with the rook. Uh, finally, the queens are off the board, so Lasker can push g4, kick the knight away from such a wonderful square. Uh, with h captures on g3, Ampassan, f captures on g3, now preparing g4, and rook to a2 now, first attacking Lasker's knight. With knight to c3, attacking the rook, and now rook to c2 first, putting pressure on the knight. Uh, we have knight back to d1 and now knight to e7. Now Capablanca will remaneuver this knight to a much better square. The idea is knight c6 to a5 and pick up the b3 pawn after, of course, the rook uh, gets behind the passed pawn. So we have knight to e3 attacking the rook. Rook to c1 check. We have king to f2 and now knight to c6. Uh, we have knight to d1 and now rook to b1. Now Capablanca has his rook behind the passed pawn, which is great. The threat is knight to a5, and he will pick up this b3 pawn. There is nothing Lasker can do about it. So, hence Lasker's next move, king to e2. Uh, Capablanca mentions it's not a blunder or anything. It's just that you can't defend the b3 pawn. So, feel free to pause the video here and tell me what, uh, what do you play here with black. 
uh, well, I give you a couple of seconds. I know all of you found it, so congratulations to everyone who found it. And also, uh, of course, you are. Uh, I, I can only imagine enjoying the show. Uh, but not night night a five here. <laughs> Rook captures on b three is just much faster because here if Lasker trades, then you get knight captures here with check. You pick up another pawn. You pick up the rook, and then it's four pawns against two pawns. Uh, of course, completely winning for Capablanca. So after rook captures on b3, we have king to e3, just improving the position of the king, and now rook to b4. Still, uh, Capablanca says, I'm up a pawn, now I'm gonna keep pressuring your d4 pawn, and you're gonna have to use at least two pieces to defend it, or a king and a piece, uh, while I improve the position of my own king, uh, and then I'm gonna start pushing. So knight to c3 by Lasker, we have knight to e7 by Capablanca, knight to e2, just remaneuvering, and knight to f5 check, pressuring the g3 pawn and the d4 pawn from f5. We have king to f2, now uh, defending the pawn and also preparing to push g4, and now g5 by Capablanca. We have g4 pushing the knight back, knight to d6, and now knight to g1. And here knight to e4 with check. So an excellent square for the knight, it's very unlikely that white will be able to kick the knight away from there. King to f1 and now rook to b1 check by Capablanca. King to g1 and now rook b2 check. King f1 and now rook to f2 check. We have king to e1 and now remaneuvering the rook over to a2, threatening rook a1 check to, to pick up the knight uh, as the dark knight is covering the f2 square. Uh, so king back to f1 and now finally Capablanca enters the last phase of the game, uh, improve the position of your own king, king g7. Uh, with rook to e3, Lasker is without an active move, he just has to wait and see what Capablanca will do. King to g6, rook back to d3. And here, Capablanca decides it's better to bring the king uh, over into the game uh, uh, this way. So with f6, rook back to e3 by Lasker, king to f7, rook to d3, and king to e7. Rook back to e3 by Lasker, and king to d6, now preparing e5. We have rook to d3 by Lasker, now first rook f2 check, Capablanca includes this uh, little maneuver for who knows what reason, king e1, rook g2 now attacking the knight, king f1 attacking the rook, and rook back to a2. Uh, la now it's Lasker's move, we have rook to e3, and only now that the rook is on e3, Capablanca pushes the pawn. We have e5, uh, rook back to d3, captures on d4, rook captures, and finally now the king has a way to enter the game, king to c5. We have rook to d1, and now all that's left is to push the pass pawn, so this is exactly what Capablanca does. We have d4, uh, and what do you play here? Lasker played rook to c1 check, Capablanca played king to d5, uh, and it was in this position that Emmanuel Lasker resigned the game on move 68. So game 10 goes to Capablanca, and he's now uh, leading the game by, by two points. Uh, Lasker, of course, can still get back into the match, but it's uh, very hard as, uh, you know, it's not that easy to beat Capablanca. Although, uh, if you found that Bishop captures an f6 idea, uh, that was a slight improvement. Lasker could have done this game, but both of them missed it. Uh, well, uh, fortunately for Capablanca, but un unfortunately for, for Lasker. Uh, why he resigned? Well, there's just no stopping uh, the pawn. The king is very passive here on f1. One, 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 one such line could be knight e2, let's say. You just keep pushing the pawn, whatever white plays, you just keep pushing the pawn. Let's say rook d1, you pin the pawn, but the d2, now wh whatever you play, king g1, you're just gonna play rook a3, uh, the threat is rook e3, attack the knight after the knight moves rook e1, one, one possible way of winning this, whatever white plays, you don't have a good move, just gonna, like I said, a rook e3, maybe knight c1, just uh, the pawn cannot capture due to the... Uh, the pin, but still, you just move the king, for example, king to c4, or maybe just rook e1, there is no defense here. Either white will capture, and then you get a queen into the game, or you can just capture here, and then you are down a rook. Uh, Jan Gustafsson uh, often says that the best uh, the best kind of endgame is where you have a rook and your opponent does not, so here is one, one such example. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's uh, the game, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's uh, uh, really, really uh, interesting how uh, a couple, uh, Lasker really didn't make any mistakes. He just had a passive position. Then maybe, maybe Capablanca had something there where when he said 92 was a bit too passive. He was defending a passive position from a passive standpoint. Maybe knight a4, a4 followed by rook to c5 would have been better. Uh, but who knows? The uh, you know the problem is uh, he, he allowed Capablanca activity and Capablanca used it and he missed that uh, little improvement that I'm sure all of you saw. 
Uh, but yeah, once again, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Giora Sherbakov, uh, uh, Roy Branford, Richard Pasanante, Gary Pariot, and uh, Stuart Graham for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the Capablanca saga, checking up on your suggestions, which are always lovely, uh, and checking up on what's new in the world. And of course, uh, as I'm currently recording in this new setup, I'm not in my hometown. I'm in, I'm in Trogir at the moment. We'll be here for maybe five to six days. Uh, do share if anything is wrong with the audio, the video, or, or anything you can come up with. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.